morning from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well today. Sending loads of love as usual. I was going to come up yesterday, but I couldn't because my voice, my throat is so sore uh, that I couldn't get the words out properly yesterday. So I'm missing that big oomph in my voice. And today it's slightly better, pleased to report that it, I felt good enough to come up today and get a couple of subjects uh, that I wanted to do yesterday, today. Now we've got a couple of podcasts coming up, like I'm already sitting here for Steve Rafe and Dale Brendan Hyde. Now, I'm just waiting for someone to sort out the stream yard thing for me once again. Uh, and those those um, interviews will be underway uh, very, very shortly. So I'll keep you posted on that. So the purpose of the video this morning, because uh, I've got another one I'm gonna do after this as well, um, is what memories of places and times gone by, bad, good, indifferent, and what those, what those, 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 those places hold for me uh, by way of the past, you know, because a simple train ride, uh, every single stop, like on the underground, can remind me of something of times gone by, because uh, I've got nothing of the present since I've been out to report since obviously the COVID thing and uh, things being the way they are, uh, so I'll start off at King's Cross and straight away, as I'm going down the escalators, passing through my mind, I'm reflecting like I do a lot these days. And I'm remembering uh, when all the drug dealers and all the, um, the trap yards and all the crack houses and all that kind of stuff were going on down to King's Cross. And I remember certain nights teaming up with a couple of uh, men from Brixton, like we've said in the past, and taking liberties with drug dealers and that kind of stuff. And, you know, all the other stuff that goes with that life. So straight away, before I even get onto the train, I've already getting memories of that reminding me of crimes. So that's what I associated King's Cross with. Uh, I can't remember anything of anything. No, there was the other memory of Only Connect, which is a creative arts charity uh, that I was at in um, before. When, remember when I got recalled? Uh, for the carnival thing way back in the day about 2009 uh, and I was doing started doing a bit of acting and plays and things like that and learning how to do talks in schools for a few weeks uh, that was the first time I ever tried to go straight if you get what I mean and ended failed at that attempt at that time and I remember obviously that was a joyful experience for me so yeah so that had mixed feelings King's Cross but once I got on the train every single stop like I'm sitting there in my own little world uh, and then we get to Baker Street and I'm, I'm remembering also the times gone by that associate uh, with crimes sadly again like I'm looking back and I remembered one in particular where Madame Two Swords was and on this day tried to be the professional thief that I thought I was which many of you say obviously that I wasn't and I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly but I was dressed up in a costume uh, to try and con my way uh, past security of a play, some private properties at the back of Madame Two Swords. So I go past, uh, the, there's a, a thing, a car park thing that goes up, and there's a port, two, three porters that sit there with their cameras and things. So uh, in this gown that I've got on, and I've got a bag on my shoulder as well, I walk past them uh, without being interrupted. So as I'm walking down this private, private, quiet place, Every single place is alarmed, uh, but me being desperate Dan back in the day, um, see an opportunity uh, of somebody sadly leaving their premises and me straight away getting on it and damaging the front door and running straight in. Now, I know I was aware that there was cameras in the front of where the port was sit because very, very private, probably diplomatic uh, people living in these places. Um, so the security is very, very high. So, so, so let me, the costume kind of gets me into a position of, you know, where they might be of the belief that I live there or I've got a good purpose for being there. That was the whole point in putting on the costume was to con my way in. Uh, but on this day, like I said, the damage straight away to the front door, I'm realizing the alarm's going off. So I know that I have to be quick. So I'm running upstairs and sadly find a jewelry box put it in a bag and I'm thinking that's enough you haven't got enough time Yami you've got to come out so how they they whether they saw me on the cameras because 
if if say say uh, the, the the car park for, um, the the their office is there, so I'm um, the the the, past, the 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 road is like that. So to take a run and dump, jump and kick, if you're watching the camera, you would have seen probably that I kicked it. So it was a very very hot move and desperate move. But I've come out, walking past them, gone past the gate, coming out. But I was in the house. I was in the house about sixty seconds, and. As I came out the Madame Two Swords entrance bit, police van, SPG, flight van, quiet, no noise whatsoever. And I'm packed up, my heart's beating a little bit because you know, you don't want to get cool. Uh, so it pulls up right next to me and I stand, I look at them, they look at me and they drive off. So they must have gone, got the alarm call, uh, private, probably alarm straight to the station. Um, gone round the other entrance to go and investigate what's probably been, what's probably happened uh, by way of burglary. So I get on the train, I get away. So this Baker Street now I'm thinking holds that memory for me and I'm thinking, oh God, is that all you've in your mind you've got to remind you of places, uh, Sam? So then the journey continues and I reach St. John's Wood, right? I reach St. John's Wood and I'm in my own little world like I am these days and uh, the doors are the doors are about to open and for a minute I make a sudden move because it was a stop that was familiar to me where I used to stop off every day and times gone by when I was on release from prison and obviously it was where mums used to live rest in peace so then for a minute you know my heart kind of thought oh god yeah I mean you're always reflecting and always remembering and, and you know people that are not around no more that many of us go through some old memories of those places that you don't stop off anymore at because they're not there no more so now they're seated sitting down in the chair and the journey continues a bit more now i get to the maid of veil bit and then i remember my cousin again and i'm thinking oh yeah look, i used to stop off here too not there no more I died rest in peace rosalind I missed out on that as well. Didn't even get to say a proper goodbye to someone that I love really, really dearly. It was more probably more like my sister uh, than anything else. So that was another sad bit of memory for me. So then I go a little bit further. I go to Labrador Grove, where I went to school, which was Beverton and Warnington. Uh, many, many friends from Labrador Grove, which is probably where I started and learned. Uh, the tricks of the trade, so to, so to speak. Um, and I'm remembering now the other day again, rest in peace, one of my good, good, good friends, Selwyn Sylvester, the gaffer, has died suddenly. And then I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, oh, last week, last week, Yanni, he messaged you two weeks ago saying, yeah, Sam, come, come, look, I want to see you and blah, 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 good DJ, Selwyn, and someone obviously I grew up with and hold dear, dear fond memories with. Also, I had a sister that I used to run around with in junior school, um, Kathleen or Kathleen, who wasn't, didn't last long as well. So my heart goes out to the family uh, today as well. I might do a tribute to, to Gaffer soon. So I was going to get off and I was going to go and knock on a few doors. But then I was thinking, I don't know where to go to ask anyone. I know I could go on Facebook and ask a few people, but this is how I'm thinking at the time during the journey. So then I come back round. We get to Queen's Park. We're talking Harrow Road, Moser. So I get off the train now and straight away now I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back in the day again, children's homes, where I grew up, where stealing began, time's gone by, who's around, who's not. Uh, got to do an interview with two people down there shortly. So I want to see one of, the, one of my, young, my youngsters, the well-known gang member uh, of that side of town is probably 30 31 now um very very well respected for the wrong reasons of course violence and being to prison and there's a legendary status uh, if you like in in that gang um sadly and then we know that further down the road is another place close by where there is already lives lost over beefs uh, where they, where you can't as you step out the front door you know one area 
goes into another. So it's very difficult uh, to live in peace, if at all, around there. So you can imagine what some of the youngsters are going through every day, that you can't be seen or you have to come out certain times or you have to be out in gang numbers to make sure you're protected. Even then you're not safe. So I'm having a chat with him and uh, these are the kind of ones we need to bring to the table, the ones at 29, 30, 31, that age group. Because now, having met him a few years ago in one of those sea cat jails, uh, obviously be family members from times gone by and he's having regrets now. And I thought it was going to take him a lot, lot longer to go through stuff or even be alive today, to be honest, with the amount of stuff uh, that he's been through. So I'm a good chat with him. Uh, really happy to see him. Very lovely boy and love him dearly. And uh, if you remember stories from prison that I've talked about before, remember to, there was a story where I, I joined in on a fight and used a weapon at some stage. But it was good to see him and it was good to hear that he wants to come out of that life and, you know, uh, probably somebody of that age group, the, the younger ones of say 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 upwards would probably listen to a bit more than say me, who's older and, you know, not from their era, but might respect me a little bit because they've done jail time with me and they know a lot about Uncle Yami, you know, in that life uh, that I led. So I was pleased to hear what he had to say, but so, I left that address and then I went to another and I'm sitting down and there's seven, eight youngsters and a big argument develops. Brothers, right? So you've got one brother who's one who's on one side of a gang and another brother, older one, who's on the other side. So I'm listening to this argument and I'm thinking to myself, wow, so you two are brothers but the postcodes are so close to each other that you belong to that one, but you belong to that one. So you're arguing about uh, you should be this side because you affiliated more with that part. No, you both grew up with your one dad or one mum and the area difference of 200 yards or so that brings you into another, if you get what I mean about the postcode thing and the wars. and. It dawned on me that I'm thinking then, so if it kicks off, one, you're going to be, both going to be affected in some way because even if you're telling them your side, you listen, you don't touch my brother or you don't touch my brother, watch out, don't you? How could it be then that you're, someone's going to die or get seriously harmed and it's your friend, but it's coming from your brother's end? So that, what does it, how does it work? I was like, all these things are tossing around in my head and I'm saying to myself, these are the times that we're living in and um, I'm hoping one day to maybe get peace treaties with some of these postcodes. Uh, we're the real uh, top, top gang members who, 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 who spit it out to me that they've had enough now and they're regretting, you know, some of the things that I'm, I regret, you know, after a lifetime of it all. And talking to a couple of them about even little things that happen in prison and they're wishing I was talking about it. I say, what, could I bring up that one if I wanted to talk about it on my show? Or could I bring up, no, 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 just in case it reminds someone of, <laughs> because they don't want it. They don't want to bring up old stuff that isn't that old as my stuff if, that I talk about, uh, but they don't want it no more. They want to be able to walk around in peace, but they can't because, because they're frightened or fearful that they may have to use violence because somebody might want to attack them or attack somebody close to them and they might have to protect themselves. But they don't want to live that life and I'm glad to hear it at that age already that they're finally having enough and wouldn't it be good to get some of these supposed leaders of gangs sitting opposite each other and trying to sort out the differences of, of why is it that you could be guilty by association and why is it then that when you go to a house where a nine day mourning thing where someone's died sadly and everybody's, you know, crying and mums and dads and uncles and someone, a youngster's been killed yet again and you're sitting there and you're, you're witnessing the hurt that it's causing uh, to your family. But yet uh, we know that the answer is probably going to be to that, that the reason that they go and react to go and do damage elsewhere is because of the old adage of revenge, that you're because of the hurt that you're witnessing around you, you think by going to do that and know that another family 
who loses their son or daughter is going to be feeling exactly the same way that you're feeling and your whole house is feeling they're going to go through that too so where is the sense in it all i tried to work this thing out that how could it be that you could feel all that and then want somebody else to feel the same way well they're going to say it's her probably or the representation of your own postcode of saying the world we won't let that go we loved him dearly i'm talking about a guy recent times i remember a story gets brought up during this visit uh, that where i'm doing my homework on the youth of today and and they're reminding me about a, a, a guy that was shot in big drugs in jail one of the jails i was in in recent years before the injuries and he had access to ounces and ounces of spice and whatever and so He's, got, he's the big man, everyone, yeah, buy an ounce of you, man. So he's got someone sweet, obviously, and stuff's being brought in. Um, but he's not looking after everybody. So they, another another kid from my area, around about those four or five areas that I call my areas, who was probably 20 at the time, 21, who's mixing in with all these lot, is one to make a name for himself during this time. And I'm witnessing it from Remand, where I saw him as a youngster in Wandsworth, and I'm thinking, you're in a hurry to be like those bigger gang members, you know, legendary status uh, in the future for your name to ring in some kind of glorious fashion that it meant something to that you went through robbing people and shooting people and stabbing people. But the one thing that's different from back in the day, why a lot of us older lot are here today, is that you lot's lifespan can be finished just like that. So I'm remembering now this story because he robbed the big kingpin at the time, supposedly thinking what he is and he was untouchable, uh, that he's the one that set it. And then obviously, you know, he gets the ratings for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're a front guy, like many times along the years, many I've seen around me, uh, the front guy is the one that puts himself on offer first. So, but I come out and he's out and he ends up somewhere on a, a different area and he ends up uh, sadly being shot and dead. And, I know, for de I know for definite that some of the friends you think you're making in prison uh, where you're joining forces with other gangs and you're thinking, yeah, more friends, my friends. I used to think the same. Yeah, I got a new friend. Look, he's from this area. I know my man from that area. I know this one. So, sadly, he doesn't get a chance to live up to what he thought like in 10, 15 years' time of living that life where he would be talked about as a criminal glorious criminal legend of some kind because of the people like me who have seen do certain things but you think that because you can rob him and rob him that everything becomes so simple that everywhere you go oh well, let me go make a move on mine let me go and try that but no no it doesn't work that way because in that one moment that you do that that other guy that you could where you've done it to others that accepted it and didn't put up much of a fight there's another man just waiting to just go watch Ping, flash of a light, gone. You didn't even get a chance to live. And up till today, your families are gonna be crying their eyes out that you didn't even get to see your, your newborn baby or your kid or whatever, whoever we're talking about, you know, in sad, sad terms. So what you put on that life, uh, well, what you're thinking as a youngster, uh, that you're gonna reach a certain age to live, to see where I can sit and talk about it, and, and give some pass on my experiences, you won't even get a chance to do that because it's so easy these days uh, to die so quickly. And talking to these older ones now, they're saying, Uncle Yami, man, I wish I wouldn't have jumped into this one. I wish I wouldn't have jumped into that one because other people's things become yours. Uh, so not only have you got to deal with your own ends and your own trouble down things, other areas where you've had problems in jail, they come up just like that and the, the boots, shoes on the other foot and then it happens. But, you know, just another week in the days and times of being an old man these days. But I'm gonna come up in a minute with fear and love and what the difference is of being hard uh, and associating with love and fear together. Okay, see you soon.